closely related or need both soft and hard skills. And jobs like lawyers, judges, or counselors, they need more of the soft skills. And for the pink spots, uh, pink spots are jobs are decreasing or is disappearing. They only have low skill or single skill, and easily replaced by robots, by computers, like simple laborers, uh, machine operators. They are more, there, there are more pink spots in this quadrant. So we see, uh, besides your single major or single skill, you really need to polish yourself with more soft skills to learn negotiation, to learn work with others, particularly like today's events. This report also listed 10 top skills you need in 2020, like complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, and people's management, coordinating with others, EI, emotional intelligence, negotiating, negotiation, and many others. Particularly, the top three, probably you cannot learn simply from your classroom. They need both soft and hard skills. You need to learn outside classroom. Well, today's occasion, again, is very important. So, where is our women's role? We all know in industry, women's participation are most, mostly related to healthcare. See, uh, this vertical is percentage for women's share, and the horizontal axis is the wage gap percentage. Women's participation in healthcare is almost over 50% such as nurses, physicians, and physical therapists, yeah, many related. And also women's participation, about nearly 40% in media, entertainment, and information. However, in this lower part with green colors, you see women's participation is still lower than 20% here, lower than 20%. Energy, mobility related, and basic infrastructures. But the wage gap is more than 30% in this area. So we urge many of you to think about maybe to engage with this um, area, energies, mobilities, and infrastructures. In this World Economic uh, Forum reports, uh, they figured the share of women's workforce on the average overall 
at CEO levels is about 9% only. For board members, nearly 28%. Uh, Actually, we know in most uh, Asian countries, the percentage may be even much lower. However, we know women are part of or are 50% of the workforce worldwide. And we know women's uh, world's half of the workforce and also on average, women are more educated globally. We all realized diversity enhances innovations. With women's education, women's purchasing power is ever growing. And several studies reported that companies with more women on the board or at senior management levels have been shown to make more profits. So therefore, nearly half of the big companies, they agree in the future, they must enhance or employ more women as workforce in order to fulfill fairness and equality, to enhance innovations, to reflect the gender composition by customer base. So this WEF report foresees in 2020, there may be an increase at senior level of women's participation from 15% to 25%. And at medium level, again, there may be another roughly 10% uh, increase from 24 to 33%. Nonetheless, we all know there are still many, many barriers for us to gender parity. Something not so clear, not so obvious, is the unconscious bias among managers, among high-level officials. We often heard comments like successful, competent women are less nice. Women's strong performance is due to hard working rather than skills. Or women are less committed to their careers. And something is so obvious for the barriers to gender parity of course, is the work-life balance and lack of role models in science and technology. So, what should we do? And 
I think all those big companies and enterprises, they agree they should, by all means, to promote work-life balance, to integrate women's workforce, Uh, I think like uh, remote working and uh, flexible working hours and um, gender friendly uh, working environments are all very important for governments or big enterprises I think they should set a clear gender target and a watch system to follow in a timeline. Of course, leadership training and leadership commitment are also equally important to integrate women's workforce. <coughs> For future education, in short, uh, also I think yesterday, if you remember, in uh, Dr. Khan's uh, speech, uh, I remember he mentioned um, the uh, national father of India, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, said seven, um, seven most, uh, uh, seven deadly things. And one of them, if you notice, is science without humanity. Okay, see, uh, most of us in school, maybe starting high school, uh, our learning system are really separated us into humanity major and science major. And we think in the future, we need both. We need both humanities and sciences courses in high school level as well as college levels. And learning is always lifelong learning. There may be no school. Everyone can learn online through internet. It's on demand. And for companies, in order to survive, they should always reskill and upskill their current employees. There are many things we cannot learn in classrooms, such as complex problem solving. Besides, we learn those hard skills, we also need soft skills. We need uh, participation in activities like today's activities. In short, I think women and the girls must be part of the fourth cyber revolution. And access to information and technologies has the power to change lives, reinvent industries, and create entire new economies. So my conclusion is be a STEM woman in the coming society. But Besides STEM courses, you still need non-STEM courses as well. And remember, cross-disciplinary training is very important. You always need, you better have internships and practical lab experiences before or even after you uh, graduate from school.